In 1974, a European football team revolutionized the international game. Playing with a unique style and adopting a new philosophy, Holland captured the imagination of fans across the globe. Total football. What is total football? We had defenders going forward, midfielders coming deep, everyone attacked. We lost the final, but everyone was talking about the Dutch side. Football is an enjoyment. You love the game, you enjoy watching it, and you enjoy doing it. And that's how it should be. For much of the 20th century, Holland was a quiet and unremarkable place to be. A flat and featureless land mirrored by a conservative population that was inward-looking and old-fashioned. As it was with society, so it was with football. Professionalism was not permitted until the mid-50s, and as a result, the Dutch game was slow and unrefined. Only once before, in 1938, had Holland qualified for the World Cup, and the post-war record was little better. The Federation was very poor organized. Uh, nothing to do with clubs, people who just in their spare time did a few things. And that's why never everybody was interested into the national team. Because mm, it was nothing special. So, well, sometimes we went, sometimes I didn't. And, and it was just a little mess. But in the 1960s, things began to change. Dutch society underwent a social and cultural upheaval. Art and music became increasingly experimental. Holland became the land of the avant-garde. Arguably the biggest representatives of this social revolution were FC Ajax of Amsterdam. With their long hair and carefree attitude, Ajax began the 70s winning three European Cups in succession, playing with a style and swagger that had never been seen before. It was a free spirit time, and it was a free spirit team, but the same with, with the good rock bands like the Beatles and the Stones at that time, they had the discipline to make good music. And they had a discipline to play good football. I think that Ajax and, 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 and I think Ajax revolutionized football, football and later the national team as well. Everyone liked what we did. We had a different philosophy on the game. We could defend. We could play hard. We could also play well technically. And that was all thanks to Michels. Het werk van van Michels. Chucky, deze jongen heeft dus een hele goede naam. He was to coach Holland at the 1974 World Cup, but it was at Ajax in the 60s and 70s that Rinus Mikkels formulated the ideas he'd later apply to the national side. Mikkels believed the game was about the use and control of space. He demanded his players be ultra-fit and able to interchange positions. Their general was the architect of what became known as total football. They were um, experts on the simple elements of the game, by kicking a ball, accepting a ball, and the position play. That talent they had. I think one of the greatest things of Ajax at that time, not was only when we had the ball, but especially when we didn't have the ball. It took such a small time to get it back. If you've got a game where you want the ball, what are you going to do with the ball? You try to attack. Yeah! But the missile there, goal for Johan Cruyff. At Ajax, Mikkels nurtured the talents of players who would later prove so influential to Holland at the 1974 World Cup. Players like Johnny Rep, Johan Neeskens, Wim Serbia, Ari Hahn and Ruud Kroll. But one player stood out from the crowd. Johan Cruyff was three times World Player of the Year and captain for club and country. It's not a question of pressure, it was more responsibility. Michaels was a big help. 
because he arranged the organization outside the field and I could arrange it inside the field. Johan Cruyff was a football giant, not just as a player, but as captain and as a leader on the pitch. He was the one who really guided us. And of course, we were all good players ourselves, but Johan was the most important in our team. He was brilliant technically, stuff that only he could do. When you played with him, you didn't notice it straight away. But when you look back at the films, you realize how fantastic he was. He was a genius and could decide the game all by himself. Ajax's great rivals Feyenoord were also an influence on the national team winning the European Cup, the UEFA Cup, and the Dutch League twice in the early 70s. They provided seven players for the World Cup squad. And whilst Ajax had Cruyff, Feyenoord had Willem van Hannigam. William van Hannigam is a legend when it comes to football. He has the best left foot I have ever seen. Van Hannigam was a genius, and not because of his speed, he wasn't the fastest, but because of his quick thinking. He was excellent technically, and he could read a match. And when all that comes together, you belong amongst the very best players in the world. Ajax had a decent team back then, but they weren't really better than Feyenoord. Often they were lucky. After us, they won the European Cup three times, and that's fantastic. Whilst we were always knocked out of the competition in a silly way. But that was the only thing. They didn't have a better team than Feyenoord. If you look at Feyenoord and you look at Ajax, different styles, but if you put it together with the best they had, with Van Harnegem and Janssen and Reisbergen, you got, actually, you created a perfect team. But the icing on the cake for the Dutch was someone who had never played for Ajax or Feyenoord. At just 22, Rob Rensenbrink left Holland for a career in Belgium, making a real name for himself at Anderlecht as a fast, goal-scoring left winger. Robbie Rensenbrink, he was the Cruyff of Belgium. I've never seen anyone like him. They called him the Snake Man because of his runs and because he did things that were impossible. Rensenbrink had an amazing left foot. He was a top player. He was exceptional good. He was a little bit uh, man in the shadow. Had to do that he played for Belgian team. If he would have played for Ajax or for, uh, for Feyenoord, it would be in a different story. But still, I think, in Dutch history, he's, he's an icon. Under coach Frantisek Fadrons, Mikkels was appointed only three months prior to the World Cup, the Dutch began qualifying for West Germany by beating Norway and Iceland home and away, scoring 24 goals in just four matches. But Belgium offered stiffer resistance. A previous nil-nil draw against their neighbours in Antwerp meant everything was still to play for. Take them for it. I joined up for the game against Belgium at the Olympic Stadium in Amsterdam, our last match in the group which we had to draw to qualify for the World Cup. Belgium had done a very, very strong team. And we were very lucky there. Very lucky because it was an offside goal, but everybody, I think 80% of people say it was a real good goal. So they would, should have been out. Yeah, it's good for the ball. Holland had a bit of luck with that free kick. Was it offside? Was it not offside? Of course, we said it was offside. The goal was disallowed and we drew. And that's how we actually qualified for Germany. Everybody realized that, uh, OK, we're going to the World Championship and, uh, hey, we've got a big name to defend. But these four years, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, all these summers, a Dutch team was in the final of the Champions League or in the European Cup. 
five years of dominating Europe, we can't look like fools, it's impossible. Michaels came in, got the organization ready. We had a great team. We had some great players, which we, saw, uh, we showed already a long time before. And that's, uh, that's why it went well. With Mikkels now in charge, Holland were put through a tough pre-tournament training camp. He demanded the team play his way with an emphasis on permanent attack. And for this, he made changes to the Dutch lineup. Michel just leaded the whole, uh, the whole process. He wanted a goalkeeper that could play. He came with the idea of putting Jan Jungblut in, not as a, a goalkeeper, but as the first, uh, uh, well, he said the first attacker. Ari Haan, as Ari Haan, a midfielder. He became a central defender alongside Reisbergen, the Feyenoord player, whilst Jan Jongblud went in goal. There's no denying that Jongblud could play football. He could, but he wasn't a great goalkeeper. But for the style of football we played, he was the best, especially when we tried to play offside. There were two sides to Michels. He was a very strict coach, but on the other hand, if the opportunity presented itself, he would be the first to join the party. But in the beginning, we trained very hard. And whenever anyone was late, he would make us start all over again. Michels was a fun guy, but in his work he was very strict. He had one goal, and that was to succeed with the team, playing football the way he thought it should be played. And he did everything to achieve that goal. <laughs> it was tough. I remember the evening before our opening match against Uruguay. All the players had to go and see Mikkels. I had a bag full of tennis balls and a racket with me because I was going to play tennis with Pete Kaiser. So I go in to see Mikkels and he's sitting there. And he says, what are you doing? What do you mean, what are you doing? Didn't you want to see me? And he says, why do I have to tell you what to do? You know, right? Do you really want to play tennis this evening? Yes, I say. I'm on my way to play tennis now. So he says, go and play then. So I leave. But I'm walking down the stairs and I'm thinking, this is really clever. Because this is how he lays the responsibility with you. He says, why do I have to tell you? I should know what I have to do. And of course, we knew what we had to do. With the squad now adapted to Mikkel's vision of total football, the Dutch were confident ahead of their opening game of the World Cup against Uruguay. The South Americans were totally outplayed in Hanover. Johnny Rep scoring both goals in a 2-0 win. A scoreless draw with Sweden followed before Bulgaria were thrashed 4-1 in Dortmund to cement Holland's passage to the second round. The Van Hanegems and the Cruyffs and the Rensenbrinks uh, and the nation of this world realised they needed a good World Cup to be reckoned as, as a big player. And, and, and also, you know, it's the first time they were hungry. And you could see from the beginning on, it was an inspired team. It felt as if every game was a home game. There must have been 20,000 Dutch supporters at every match. It felt as if we were playing in Holland. In the second round, Holland faced Argentina, East Germany and Brazil. Against the Argentines, the Dutch produced their most scintillating display yet, winning 4-0 and playing some of the most stylish football ever witnessed at a World Cup. I scored in that game, a great game, a game that I will always remember. Well, that's the same with all the games I played for the national team. It was typical Dutch weather. It was raining. In Holland we play a lot in the rain, so the conditions suited us. It was our weather, our style of game. 
En het was onze wedstrijd. We knew we were better than them. Dat we beter waren en we knew we could win. Dat we konden winnen. The football we played in 1974. People hadn't seen that before. De wereld nog niet. The way it all flowed so naturally. We would employ the tactic that if our left back Kroll moved forward and wide, then I knew I had to defend. That's how it would all move around. It was very fluid football. In my opinion, nobody is more important than anyone else in a team. One might get more attention or is a bit better than a teammate, but in a team, everyone is important. If he doesn't get possession of the ball, then he can't pass it to you. And if you do get it, we're not able to receive it or we're tightly marked, then you can't do anything with the ball. That's how the game works. We went out to win, to win the game. And that's what's been our mentality. And, and how do we win? Well, I'm not physically, so I need the ball. So it's, it's been more or less that way of thinking where the transformation was not to go back and have a look what happens. No, go out there and just try to win. Four days later, and again in the rain, highly rated East Germany were seen off 2-0. Rob Rensenbrink scoring his only goal of the tournament. Holland's final group game against Brazil was effectively the semi-final of the World Cup. A bruising encounter, but without doubt the match of the tournament. We could play with great combinations. Fantastic football. It would be like art sometimes. No, we could be physical too, and that was important because that was an integral part of the Dutch side. To beat Brazil 2-0, that was a great achievement. Brazil were world champions in 1970, and a little country like ours came along and played Brazil off the pitch. That was really a game where everybody was focused and everybody did what they had to do. We didn't only outplay the Brazilians, but we outplayed them with the best football. It was not only the, the result, the result at the end, well, it could be 2-1, 3-1 or 3-0 or 2-0. It didn't even matter. We just played football which the, which the world loved and, and, and that against the Brazilians. After five wins and one draw, 14 goals scored and only one conceded, Holland had reached the World Cup final for the first time. <laughs> At the Olympic Stadium in Munich, they would face West Germany, European champions and pre-tournament favorites. The Germans had labored through the competition, but playing in front of their home crowd meant they would prove formidable opponents. They had a kind of attitude that was quite in contrary with the Dutch, you know, it's free spirit, open mind. The German had a little bit, you know, they were playing counter football a little bit. It was, it was a, a, a different characters. And, and, and that put all together, created a kind of attitude with the Dutch of, okay, we, we're going to teach them a lesson. We knew they were Germans. Germans is always difficult because they will go until the end. We knew we were much better. We knew we, uh, we played better. We were not afraid at all. Holland kicked off and immediately began an extraordinary passage of play, insolently moving the ball around the pitch. At one point, Cruyff had the ball at his feet with only goalkeeper Youngblood behind him. No German player had touched the ball when Cruyff drew Uli Hernes's foul. Cruyff, Cruyff, and in the dark, he falls by the Cruyff had the lead over the left, and it is a penalty in the first minute. Penalty, and up stepped Johan Neeskens. I thought that Hernes was, but now comes the penalty for Neeskens. He's overleider. It was the perfect exposition of total football and the most explosive start to a World Cup final in history. 
We had a style to surprise our opponents in the first 15 minutes with lots of pressing, lots of movement and lots of passing to try and score a goal as fast as possible. We got off to a good start, winning that penalty right at the very beginning of the game. But I remember thinking that could be a bit of a problem. Because we then thought to ourselves, they're Germans, you know, they're not our friends. So let's humiliate them in front of their own fans. Now, the trouble was that one half of our team decided to keep playing like we had been playing for the whole tournament. And the other half started taking the mickey out of them. And that's why our game plan broke in two. For more than 20 minutes, the Dutch toyed with the Germans. But midway through the first half, Bernd Holzenbein's run drew a lunging challenge from Wim Janssen. And once again, referee Jack Taylor pointed to the spot. Paul Breitner converted. Then, just before half-time, Gert Muller added a second. We believed in our capabilities, but then we went and held back a bit. I don't know why. It wasn't like the Dutch team to do that. We always put a lot of pressure on to score the second goal. We have played some very good matches at the World Cup and we really thought we would win the final two. Who knows, maybe that was where we went wrong. Maybe we were wrong to think beforehand we would simply beat those Germans. Maybe we were a bit too sure of ourselves. We missed such a lot of chances, such a lot of chances. So we played quite well, but the details were not there. And one of the things were uh, scoring the goals. I think we played a little too confident and that, that, uh, at the same time if you do that you don't do the things perfectly and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's why we didn't win the game and that's why we lost. Of the game I didn't feel too bad. Of course we lost the final but we were proud to have got there. The Netherlands had come from nothing in football to being at the centre of the football world. That, of course, was very important for us. The Dutch returned home and were greeted by thousands at Schiphol Airport and many more in Amsterdam and Rotterdam. Despite losing the final, Mikkels and his men were national heroes. We flew back to the Netherlands and first went to Amsterdam. That really was unforgettable. It made us forget about the outcome of the final. It was only then we realised the excitement we had aroused in the country. The Dutch national team had never achieved anything. For the first time, the whole country had watched all the matches, then the final. And, well, it was a shame we lost. But the public's enthusiasm for us was enormous. It was a fantastic party. It was a fantastic party. We went to the Royal Palace, there was a party with the Prime Minister of the time, there was dancing. We just didn't expect to get such an amazing reception. The Oranje may have come home empty-handed from West Germany, but they'd left a lasting legacy. In 1978, without Cruyff and Hannigan and Mikkels, they again reached the final of the World Cup, losing to hosts Argentina. And in 1988, with Mikkels again in charge, they won their first major trophy at the European Championship. I think that a lot of coaches should realise what is more important, that you win today a trophy, or they talk 40 or 50 years later about the way of playing, because what you do then is giving supporters a dream of how the way football can be played. And that's something that a football player, but also a coach, can be very proud of. 
Het is eigenlijk wel te gek dat... It's crazy that Holland lost the final. Yet everyone remembers the Dutch team. I was in Saudi Arabia and I mentioned Edgar Davids to the people. And they say, Edgar Davids? What about Patrick Kluivert? But they didn't know who Patrick Kluivert was either. Then I mentioned Rensenbrink. And they've got the VHS on the shelf on the wall. <laughs> That's just crazy. The whole world was sad that we lost. Because when they saw us playing, everybody was happy. They just went home laughing. And, and that's the nicest thing in life. If you can laugh and, and, and enjoy yourself, it's one of the most important things there is.